Hello, this is Bill Shed here, and today we are going to make our third video in the Linux trilogy that I'm making about, like, how Linux can grow, and, well, I think it's about time to make it a quadrilogy, because I think there's a topic that we need to discuss before we move on to, like, how us, how us as a Linux, as a community can, like, try to get Linux out to the mainstream and spread awareness, and the thing is, the reason why I want to make this video before we get to that part is because, like, this is kind of a topic that the Linux community likes to discuss when people like to bring up the idea of bringing Linux out to the mainstream or spreading awareness about it or advertising Linux. That's it. Some people just don't like the idea of mainstream Linux, while others are okay with it. It's kind of a controversial thing in the Linux community, like mainstream Linux, like, some people don't think it's good, some people think it'll be good for Linux, some people are just right straight smack dab in the middle, middle the centrist model column that just don't carry the way or just like I see benefits, I see I see disadvantages, I and they both be well, be saying like and I can get both I can get all three sides sort of like I'd say like I'm close to like I'm in between the center and the pro and like the, or definitely probably pro Linux going, like, I'm in, I'm for Linux going to the, was it the, the mainstream? Yeah, like, well, there's also a lot of people that just are on the fence or just don't want to see, or just think it'll be a bad thing for Linux, Linux to go out to mainstream. And, but first of all, before we discuss that, I, I, I do notice the audio has been getting horrible somehow recently. I need to look into it. Which I plan on. Still need to find things, so I think I'm sort of done something to like negate it for a little bit. If I have to, I may hop over to my Windows boot to work on it to help keep the videos high quality while sort the audio issue out on here. But back to the topic. What? So basically, the reason why a lot of people just why this is quite controversial is because, like, for many reasons, of course. And to be honest, the first thing I need, first reason that there are a lot of people who don't want to see Linux go mainstream is an increase in proprietary software. And a lot more proprietary software on Linux, and a lot more people using proprietary software. But I'm, like, more on the fence here, like, to be honest here, some businesses really need some people proprietary software to run, like, and of course Linux, people in the free and open source community can always make adaptations, <clears throat> can always update stuff like GIM to include more features, like it's, but again, there are some legitimate businesses that just can't straight up use free and open source software, like, because maybe some of them just have security concerns, maybe they feel like Free software just be hijacked easily. You know, well, you can easily, well, you know, from my perspective, like you easily see the same thing happening to, you see the same thing happening to stuff like Microsoft Word and stuff like that. Stuff is just as secure as there is stuff like LibreOffice. They can both get screwed over. As well as like a and another thing is, like, there's this activism mentality in this community. I'm not shooting it down. I'm, I'm all for people using free and open source software. But I also do have to acknowledge, but I also do acknowledge myself that some companies just can't use free and open source software because some, it's like, for the proprietary equivalents include more stuff in it that can actually, that's more beneficial to the business. And to the business, it's probably worth, to the business, it's worth its the cost to use like that. But like I said, there's all free and open source software they, they do get forked though, but some business but businesses like to have problems dealt with more quick like quick quicker. Like they don't want it they they they're not the types that have to hop on a forum and ask why is how the heck do I do this in LibreOffice? They're more the type to go up, ring their phone and and just call Microsoft tech support or something, like, just to figure out how, 
how to do something why Microsoft Word is not working, or calling Adobe to figure out why Photoshop's not working. They may want something done quicker. It's more for the business account. But for the people on the norm normal side, more on the normal side, I just the normies, if you know what I mean. That that this is where the point gets better, I think. That for that cause of proprietary software to come up be for the Linux more is a little more feasible at the same time, but the activism mentality kind of shows itself and starts to kind of look a bit bad, if you know what I mean, sort of. And then it's like, yeah, I do get these people, like, maybe these people need to try out free and open source software at least. And maybe they'll have, maybe, and once they enjoy free and open source software, they can just put their card down and out, stop giving them payment information in Adobe or Microsoft and just straight up use LibreOffice and GIMP. But, like, yeah, though I do see the app, like a lot of the pro free and open source software people do realize, do re realize, and I do realize myself that people will, the normal, more normal people will use free and open source software. Will, will just keep on using Photoshop. They'll keep throwing their money out for Photoshop and Microsoft Word. But again, some of those are employed in some businesses too that just have that rely themselves on proprietary software. And some businesses you don't go on, don't want to go through the hurdle of using of just getting their own development team to fork LibreOffice or just deal with the issue themselves. And I do think businesses at least, at least the bigger businesses should try to create their own development teams to like fork to make forks of the free and open source software that action that can help the business out. That's what it's one of the benefits of free and open source software. You get to make it adapted to yourself if you want, and that's why I think the businesses need to realize. At the same time, law businesses do have do. Like, do you have reasons for using proprietary software, stuff like Microsoft Word over LibreOffice? That's some of the reasons I mentioned previously. So those reasons can be negated and, and cause free and open software, which I'm all for, to go up and, up and look better than proprietary. Well, if you're talking about norm, normal people, then proprietary, the free and open source software tr trumps proprietary software. Like, it triumphs over. Like, there's no way of we're talking proprietary software, being free and open source software when you talk about normal people. But you talk when you bring in, well, if they're an employee for a company, like they're an office worker, they're not you. They're not. They're going to keep have to keep using Microsoft Word unless their office, the company that owns their office, like doesn't have an issue with them using LibreOffice. And then you got some companies. Just Begging for people to use Photoshop when you do stuff. Though I do think those, I don't think there's many of those as many as companies that beg you to use Microsoft Office. But I do see a little of a problem. By do I see it as much of a problem myself? No. Like, I like who cares? They want to spend their money. I know it's our job to show them the yellow brick road to free and open source software city, but. At the same time, like, they're, it's their fault that they're spending money on proprietary software. But I do think, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't bring them the idea of it. But I don't think it should be a reason to hate bringing Linux into the mainstream. The other thing that people just don't like when you don't want to see Linux go to the mainstream. I, mean, I think the reason I just mentioned was probably the biggest out of all. But I think the second reason it is a bit more valid in my opinion. And that is security flaw. And this one's actually valid. And this is security. The reason why Windows has so many viruses. Well, Macs don't have have as many viruses, people say Macs don't get viruses, even though we all know they do get viruses if you have a brain up here, is that Macs 
is on Windows computers. Windows is the most used operating system in the world when you're talking about desktop computers. So people making computer viruses are going to make viruses targeting Windows computers. I can't think it's so knocking on the door. No, I'm knocking the computer case. Yeah, but like people just think like they're malware and, and virus makers, they target Windows because it's the most commonly used operating system desktop wise and they're tar and they're hope they go get the most out compared to Linux where who do you targeting with Linux? Like not many people use Linux are casual and don't have a brain. A lot, and I'm not trying to insult Windows users here. <laughs> but a lot of people who use Linux have a pretty big brain. I'm surprised we all don't look like Martians yet. The, the Martians from the movie Mars Attacks, you know what I mean? Brains so big, they stick out. But, like, thing is, virus, if there was a Linux virus made, it, it wouldn't even get far because... Like I said, most people in Linux community are quite smart. They know their way around this stuff. So they're not going to fall for it. And two, even you know with that, there's not many dumb people that use Linux. There's not many people that are old enough to fall for it. There's no no one's going to fall for a virus on Linux, if you know what I mean. Meanwhile, Mac, there's more like Macs are secure. I'd say just as secure as Linux, I think, maybe. But there's going to be more people make a bit more people making virus support because yeah, it's like ten times as, mar as much market share as Linux. And people who use Macs are not brainiacs. They're they're like they. A lot of them are old. A lot of them are millennials that don't know their way around computers. They're just using it because they're a bit more artsy. But at the same time. But, like, thing is, when you got, like, computers like this, like, Mac, like, you have an iMac or something. These people, like, people use iMacs. Like, like I said, people with iMacs are, they don't, like, they're not brainiacs like a, you know, they, they're more easy, susceptible to viruses and malware. The other thing and the thing that I think would protect Linux, even if it got mainstream, there would be a virus in main port, is we have package man. Where you just hop on Yas if you're on you if you're using Open SUSE and download a search for something from there and just download. You can go on you just type in sudo apt install a program on on good old inner terminal and that program should be safe. Or you, and you get the user pod stories like AUR and soon to come um, the Debian user pod story, which yes, that is becoming a thing, but let, we're going to see how long that lasts. I swear, if it becomes a thing, oh boy, Ubuntu, I'm probably going to, I'm definitely staying on Pop OS, that's for dang sure if that becomes a thing and is good enough. Actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, but like, even if Linux got to the got to the mainstream security wise, package managers and and user repository managers like the peeps at AUR would keep out a lot of malware. Maybe, obviously, not as much when you're talking about the the upcoming Debian user repository of AUR, but keep. But there will still be far less viruses and malware as much as you just get from downloading a file off the internet. And even that, Linux is still quite secure. These things will be begging for root permission. If you got a brain up here, you can tell. Maybe I shouldn't use this program if it's trying to break into my root directory. So, yeah. In Basically, though, in all honesty, it's a bit more valid reason to be worried if you might be against Linux going mainstream, security-wise, security a lot 
more malware, more viruses can be made for Linux and targeted towards Linux users. And that's just going to cause a similar situation that's happening to Windows right now. Like, in fact, it's gotten so bad with Windows, Microsoft is literally using security reasons because it's based on that to literally bring out some very strict requirements for people's computers, such as TPM2, 8th, 8th generation Intel CPUs, or Ryzen 2000, I think, CPUs, as well as Secure Boot and that type of stuff. Because what, because virus manufacturers are just getting those things out to Windows computers. And people, believe it or not, there's a lot of people that still use computers that are made more than three years ago. Well, I don't think it was time for my, the right time for Microsoft to do, like, to bring out those hefty requirements. Like, they should have waited, like, an, enough, like, to around 2025 to bring out some, bring out requirements like that so people could actually, so majority of PC users could act, would actually have those requirements and really want people to go. But, like I said, they're shooting themselves in the leg. But the thing, like, security-wise, like even though more viruses may be making it over, that would be a problem. But again, Linux users, users have something called package managers, and they're basically a better shield at, de at defending against viruses as you then basically just relied on using EXE files. Thankfully, Windows seems to be getting a little bit more secure or with them getting the package advantage so people can be are probably less likely to get screwed over. Look at that. So now let's go over why I think would be the bet like why or the reasons that I feel like we should all be for Linux going mainstream. First of all, compatibility. If Linux goes mainstream and not more and more people start using it, first of all, more people First of all, like there's gonna be a lot of compatibility, a lot of new software being poured over the Linux. Wine's probably gonna get upgraded more. And for all gamers out there, more games will come over. Proton's gonna get better. There's gonna be a lot more work for going to Linux programs. More programs getting poured over. It won't be just Civilization 5, 6, and as well as Valve games get imported to Linux. No, it'll be the entire dang suite. It'll be Call of Duty. It'll be Black Ops 69 getting poured over, baby. You really into that? Like, you'll have a lot more things poured over Linux. That compatibility will be a lot higher. And it's just a big positive to have compatibility. There's a reason why barely anyone uses B BSD, but a lot more people use Linux. For as a daily driver, BSD barely has any market share. You can say the same about Linux, but Linux is like quadruple that market share, or quadruple maybe. Linux has a lot more market share than BSD. And BSD, the only software that I know that actually that is support on, that's available on there is rather just some free open source software. Meanwhile, Linux is a full on mix. You got Google Chrome, where you use Firefox on there. You're not full on limited. Well, no, I don't even know if there's Firefox on BSD, to be honest. But there probably is, to be honest. Because BSD users would demand the crap out of Mozilla for that. But, there is a reason why compatibility would be a good thing. And that's why I think us as a community need to understand Especially people that are against Linux going mainstream. Another thing, another big positive to Linux going mainstream is just overall like more support. You're going to get more support from other companies throwing stuff in. Linux just, will just overall get a lot better. 
better as a disk as a kernel. Well, GNU slash Linux the whole will just get a lot better. better. And I'm going to talk about a little side effect that needs to be discussed in a minute. But Linux as a whole would get better. You get a lot of good distros coming out. A lot of distros getting a lot of good updates and more money would just be these well, in. And the next thing that would really need to be need to be discussed. Next thing, next positive I feel next thing I I think we need to discuss are positives for people as a whole. So, some positives, if Linux were to go mainstream, I think people would get a lot better. Like, I, people's lives, they, they would love Linux. That's why I think you need to get over some of the issues and throw Linux out to the mainstream. Customization. You just customize crap out of Linux if you want. You got literal package management. Things me easy on here. On your like Windows, but it's all security and just checking down here. Yep, my brain's dead. <laughs> it's all it's just good stuff. Like, you got a lot, like, in fact, learning the command line on Linux is actually a pretty dang good gateway to, and to actually get you, in, get you interested in the program, which. Means more programmers, yo. Like, so you basically have higher security. People just be getting higher security. They can customize the crap out of Linux. Bringing open source software, baby, being served them on the table like it's a buffet. Their eyes would be opened up. Like, their glasses would come off. And their eyes would immediately get better. Linux, Windows is basically like if you just crossed your eyes and had to put a pair of glasses on just to be able, and then you're going in blindly. Meanwhile, you take those, you all Linux, you can see just fine. But at the same time, the amount of packages blast you in your face by no software, the pop shop can just do the same dang thing. Make you need glasses again. So, yeah. So, here's the thing that I think needs to be discussed. The, the side effect of Linux just being supported more and more desert. There could be a point where Linux gets so big or potentially we can have basically three different split. We can get like a situation where maybe Debian distros, like where some distros are so dang far out, distant from another at some point. Okay, evolution here, maybe. Maybe you have one parent. Like, think about it. Think of it up here. You have one parent. Like, we're already at the point where. Deviant's practically a grandpa disk up in Wahoo. Or maybe even a great grandpa disk like a few years from now. Because Deviant gave birth. Ubuntu is based on Deviant. And Pop OS, Elementary OS, and Linux Mint are based on Ubuntu, and Ubuntu is based on Deviant. See? Debian's a grandpa. Move that over. Oh look, Arch Linux. Arch Linux may not be a full-on grandpa yet, but Arch Linux is getting to that point. You know, I have stuff. This was like Manjaro, which I wouldn't be surprised if Manjaro were to branch off to its own distro at some point. Red Hat. Already gave birth to Fedora, and I think Fedora may have split off into multiple different distros too. There have been made some distros that have been based off Fedora too. So Red Hat is possibly a grandpa distro, and maybe Gentoo could be a grandpa distro. If you know what I mean? 
I feel like when you get about 10 years down the road, this is going to be event eventually, this is eventually going to happen, like 10 or 20 years down the road. Debian's going to be a great, great grandpa distro or a great, great grandpa distro. It's a great great grandfather that's still running around on in the yard perfectly fine. Meanwhile, Ubuntu would be a grandpa distro. And you'd have have a distro based on Pop OS. And a distro based on that distro that's based on Pop OS. And you're just going to get to the point where you're going to have programs just made exclusively for like Debian based this like for a certain for a certain branch of distros on that side or whatever. Or a crap ton of distros being excluded or just a few branches of distros being spoiled at a time. I were even a few sub branches of some dis of hard distro family being spoiled at a time when you get at a certain point. Because some distros just be so dang distant. Some some time from on, from now on, there's going to be an arch-based distro that'll be extremely, that won't, don't resemble resemble, not much at all other than file structure in kernel to good old to a distro that descended from Pop OS, yes, or Linux Mint, or Kali Linux. Course, fourth of July, baby. Like the thing is, it will get to a point where some districts are just gonna be split off. Like some districts are just are just not gonna be able to thrive out. Linux would probably just be separating to Debian branch distros, Arch based distro, Arch and Arch based. Like it'll probably split up. Keep in mind, Chromebooks. Chrome OS and Android are Linux distros, technically. I know Linux me likes to argue on rather in Chrome OS and Android are Linux distros, and I'm, I'm sorry to break it to you, but they are. They use the Linux kernel. They may not be new. They may, they may not be free and open source. They may be proprietary, but they're still Linux distros. They're just not, they just lack the new. They just like the GNU. These are just Google Linux distros. Google slash Linux distros, you know what I mean, yo. It there's there's literally like Like you get like those are already just split off. Like they're already their own branches when compared to other operating systems and market share. Even though they run the same kernel as a bit to a DB. I think this is where I'm going to end this off here. Basically, I think us as a list, we need to come to realize, come to a realization that it's better for us all for Linux to go mainstream. There may be negatives, but there's some things inherently about Linux that just mean we're, that just make Linux the, a really good disk, really good operating system to go mainstream. And Bill Shea here. Hope to see y'all next time. See ya! If y'all like this type of content, make sure to drop a like. If you wanted to see more of this content, make sure to subscribe. If you don't like this content, or specifically this video, drop a dislike. And it'd be heavily appreciated if you were to also drop a comment explaining why you disliked the video some, and some issues. Also known as constructive feedback. I'll see y'all next time. See ya.